back delegates. Um, the sec second session of the uh, National Conference includes the presentation of awards and I welcome the President of the stage who will uh, make those awards. Thank you, President. Delegates, special guests, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've all enjoyed some lunch and been able to catch up with some colleagues and friends old and new. The AMA National Conference would not be the, the National Conference without awards. We have a couple of important ones to present now. First one to present is the MJA MDA National Prize for Excellence in Medical Research. First, we have the pleasure of awarding the that national prize for that excellence in medical research. It's an award and a cash prize of $10,000 for the best research article published in the Medical Journal of Australia in the previous calendar year. And this year, the award goes to a study designed to determine the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease in school-aged children and young people in Timor-Leste. The winning article, Rheumatic Heart Disease in Timor-Leste School Students, an echocardiography-based prevalence study, was authored by a large group of researchers from around Australia and Timor-Leste. I now invite the Senior Medical Editor of the Medical Journal of Australia, Dr Christine G, and the MDA representative, Ms Rachel Mitchell, to the stage to summarise the research and present the award. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. The MJA has a commitment to publishing high quality research from all around the world. And every year we receive more and more submissions. Our impact factor is at its highest level ever and continuing to rise. But more than this, other data such as downloads and altmetrics are showing that by publishing in our national journal, you're having an impact that is more than just citations. We love to publish work that changes practice. So we thank those of you who read the journal, who've submitted to us already, uh, and we do ask that you continue to do so. Each year, as Tony has mentioned, we select our best studies to be shortlisted for the Prize for Excellence in Medical Research. This is a difficult task. As you can imagine, the calibre of entrance is always very high. So we do rely on our panel of uh, expert external blinded judges to cast the deciding votes for us. We thank MDA National for generously making this prize possible for now eight years in a row. Um, and that is very, very much appreciated from us. So the winner this year, uh, the paper was entitled Rheumatic Heart Disease in Timor Leicester School Students, an Echocardiography Based Prevalence Study. Um, as Tony mentioned, um, the work done um, led to the calculation of prevalence data in this vulnerable population. And um, we feel that this has really paved the way for future public health initiatives to address this important preventable and treatable condition um, in this area. So um, we're very pleased that um, these authors have won this year. So on behalf of Professor Talley and the MJA, I'm very pleased to present this award to Dr. Joshua Francis, who will be accepting on behalf of his co-authors today. I just want to say thank you very much for this award and for the opportunity to receive it here at the AMA National Conference. It's an acknowledgement uh, not just of my work but of the work of many people who uh, worked very hard to make this possible and it's good for me to be able to acknowledge them. Uh, the uh, first author, Kim Davis, who's in the UK and couldn't be here to receive the award, a large group of authors that included Tim Rees as well as Australian, um, predominantly clinicians but researchers also working together to, to achieve this, uh, this project. 
And in acknowledging them, to acknowledge also East Timor Hearts Fund and another Australian NGO, Maluk Timor, and the Ministry of Health in Timor-Leste, who we partner with to try to uh, build the health system in Timor to be able to make a difference in that place. Uh, but beyond being an acknowledgement of the work of those people, it's also an acknowledgement of what continues to be an incredibly significant problem in our own country, in Australia, but also in Timor-Leste, the problem of rheumatic heart disease that affects so many uh, children and young people. And in Timor, as we conducted this ECHO study based in schools, it was my first opportunity to see rheumatic heart disease in Timor that wasn't resulting in heart failure and children admitted to hospital and many of them dying. And to be able to detect rheumatic heart disease early and to be able to make a difference in the trajectory of the disease, I think, was an amazing privilege in this study. And I, I just want to briefly uh, mention the impact of this uh, study and the work that continues from it, uh, because I think that one of the things for me in this process has been learning the, uh, the power and the potential impact of research um, published in journals like the Medical Journal of Australia. It uh, can have a very significant impact on the people who are involved as investigators, and that's been the case for the Timorese collaborators. For many of them, it was their first publication. Kim Davis, who I mentioned as the first author of this paper, uh, conducted this as part of a, a college research project for the College of Physicians that I supervise. And it was her first publication, and she's gone on to work as a, a research fellow in the Oxford Vaccines Group and continues to supervise and support rheumatic heart disease research in Timor-Leste. Um, but as well as uh, the impact it has on those who are involved, uh, it is also able to have a significant impact on policy, and I know this is something uh, uh, that the AMA is very passionate about. And in the week that this was published in the MJA, there was an announcement made by the Minister of Health in Timor-Leste that Timor would commit to a rheumatic heart disease action plan to address the significant problem of rheumatic heart disease based on the findings of this study uh, and um, emerging evidence of the impact that uh, rheumatic heart disease is having on children and young people in that place. And so ultimately the impact isn't just on the investigators or even on the policy uh, um, framework that exists around problems like rheumatic heart disease, um, but it is able to have a very significant impact on patients. And we're very grateful for the prize from MDA, MDA and uh, from the MJA. And the $10,000 will be used almost immediately this year to contribute to ongoing work in Timor-Leste and in remote Aboriginal communities in the Northern Territory as we continue to find ways to better detect rheumatic heart disease early and to start children on a trajectory that sees them continue in good health and not progress to heart failure and death as a result of rheumatic heart disease. So thank you very much for the opportunity to receive the award and to share a little of the impact that this uh, research has had. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Christine. And thank you very much, Joshua. It's my great pleasure today to be here on behalf of MDA National to present the $10,000 cheque to the winners of the Medical Journal of Australia MDA National Prize for Excellence in Medical Research for 2019. As a doctor-owned organisation since 1925, MDA National is very proud to support, protect and promote the medical profession. We are truly invested in promoting excellence in medicine. MDA National has continued to proudly sponsor this award alongside MJA to acknowledge the invaluable research taking place within the medical profession today, which contributes greatly to the future path of medicine. The winners of this year's prize um, wrote an outstanding research article, as discussed by Joshua today. I'd like to name the authors of the winning article, Kimberly Davis, Beau Romagne, Anthony Draper, Gennario Dos Santos, Noel Bailey, Elizabeth Peratz, Benjamin Reeves, Alan Appleby, Andrew Cochran, Timothy Johnson, Laura Corte, Evonia de Rosario, Inez de Silva Alameda, Catherine Roberts, Jonathan Carapritis, and Joshua Francis. Dr. Joshua Francis from the Royal Brisbane Hospital and Menzies School of Health Research has spoken to you today and is here to accept the award on behalf of the research team. So on behalf of MDA National, it's my absolute pleasure to present this cheque to you today.
well done, Joshua. Again, that was a, a nice little uh, moment there, especially to have your mother and your daughter present who I had the privilege of meeting. Our next award, and the last before we move into national conference proceedings, is a personal favourite of many of us here at the AMA. As chair of the AMA Indigenous Health Task Force, I take a very strong interest in the AMA Indigenous Medical Scholarship. Boosting the size of the Indigenous workforce is critical to closing the gap in health outcomes between Indigenous Australians and the wider community. Latest records show that there are about 500 Indigenous doctors and 310 Indigenous medical students across the nation. We know that Indigenous Australians have better health outcomes when they are treated by Indigenous health workers. They are more likely to make and keep appointments when they are confident that they will be treated in a culturally sensitive manner. Since 1994, the AMA has been helping to increase the number of Indigenous doctors in Australia by providing a medical student with a $10,000 a year for the duration of their studies. And I would like to acknowledge the BB and A Miller Fund, a sub-fund of the Australian Communities Foundation for the funding of the 2019 scholarship. Their help is greatly appreciated. I would like to thank members who have donated to the scholarship. Donations are tax deductible and can be made online at the AMA website. But now to this year's winner. And this year, the AMA Indigenous Medical Scholarship goes to a Darwin medical student with a long-term plan to work in remote Indigenous communities in the Northern Territory. Nikki Castellarizios is in her second year of a medical degree at Flinders University, Northern Territory Medical Program. She's also a registered nurse and a mother of three young children. And she says her aim is to become the kind of doctor she would want her family to encounter when they need medical attention. Her passion for medicine stems from experiencing and witnessing the barriers and the difficulties Indigenous people face when accessing health care. She has seen Indigenous people choosing to avoid culturally unaware professionals or clinics and live with their deteriorating health. She has a 10-year plan to become a fellow in her field and then a 15-year plan when her children grow up to work in rural and remote areas of the Northern Territory. Nikki is indeed a worthy and deserving recipient of the $10,000 a year scholarship. The significant gap in life expectancy between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians is a national disgrace that must be tackled by all levels of government, the private and the corporate sectors and all the segments of our community. Through investments in the future of doctors like Nikki, we can all help close the gap. I invite Nikki to the stage to accept her award and to say a few uh, words. Thank you. Um, I'm honoured, sorry, I'm honoured to be here and grateful to be the recipient of this award. I would like to thank the AMA for the award as well as the BB and A Miller Fund for their sponsorship this year. Well, you know a little bit about me already, but I'm an Arundel woman and as I was mentioned, I've been born and raised in Darwin. I'm a mother to three beautiful boys, aged two, four and five years old. Um, this winning award has assisted in purchasing resources for my studies as well as creating t more time for me to study by ensuring my children have been cared for. Like a medical student with exams, time is one of the best gifts you can give a medical student as well as a mother, any parent. Um, I've chosen to study medicine as I experienced or seen firsthand the barriers and difficulties Indigenous people face when accessing healthcare. I've studied nursing and chosen to become a doctor as I feel I'll have a greater influence in making change and towards closing the gap that Indigenous Australians currently experience, my people. My journey through higher education has not been easy. I'm actually the first in my immediate family to have, under, to have an undergraduate degree and I also did not complete year 12. 
My, well, my mum always encouraged my brothers and I to study. Life had happened and I had to get a job in high school. I always knew I wanted to study medicine though, and while not having an under year 12, sorry, has made my journey a little bit longer and a little bit harder, I've had to learn pretty quickly to be academically disciplined and refine, and focus on refining my skills in structuring and prioritizing my time. I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by amazing people in my cohort, tutors and academics who have assisted me in developing and refining my skills that have enabled me to be successful in medical school so far. Studying medicine has been a privilege and receiving this award has made my journey through medical school that little bit easier and my goals that much more achievable. Thank you. Thank you. So we have had a program change, but I'll, um, it is my responsibility and pleasant duty to thank our conference sponsors, and after that I'll hand back to the President before we go to the National Proceedings section of the program. So it is my great pleasure to acknowledge our sponsors. We couldn't have a, a National Conference without them, and I ask you please to do them the courtesy of visiting them uh, in their um, uh, booths out there in the um, dining area. So first of all, Avant Mutual, the Australian Digital Health Agency, Best Practice Software, Hester Industry Superfund, Defence Force Recruiting, UNO Home Loans, 136 National Home Doctor, End of Life Directions for Aged Care, RACMAR, Elite Fit Out, Doctors for the Environment, VSO International, and Medi Records. Would you please join with me in a round of applause for our sponsors? And uh, the president has a, uh, an introduction to make to a surprise late addition to our program. As many of you no doubt know, one of the highlights of the first day of National Conference is to have our invited political health leaders um, or wider um, government leaders as to be part of our national conference. Of course, the timing of the election really threw a spanner in the works of that, and so it was very difficult to, um, for anyone to accept or take up that invitation until the results of the weekend's election were known. I have a video uh, only received very, very, only a matter of um, a few hours ago from the presumed to be Minister for Health, uh, Mr. Greg Hunt, uh, who has uh, in the, makes uh, in, in that video um, some reflections on the past few years and some indications of the way forward um, if, as he will acknowledge, um, the confirmation that his appointment will be confirmed. And, and that he is looking to uh, uh, work with us. But I, I won't steal his thunder. Um, it's because of the election timing, and, and, and that's why it's not in your agenda. Um, but uh, if we can throw to the video, uh, please. So I apologise I can't be with you in person, but as you may understand, there have been a few national events, and from my perspective, uh, a very fortunate outcome. Uh, at the moment, uh, technically, we are in caretaker mode, so it wouldn't have been appropriate for me to uh, uh, to, uh, to fly to, to visit, but I am looking forward to working with you. And one of my first calls was with uh, Tony Bartoni. So to uh, Tony Bartoni, uh, to uh, uh, all of the executive of the AMA and its federal council, uh, thank you for all of your work and support over the last two years. Uh, there has been no confirmation of the ministry. Um, uh, if I'm asked, I'd be delighted to accept and to continue in health. And uh, for the time being, I am continuing, and uh, we will wait and see. And shortly, the Prime Minister will make his announcement. But uh, it uh, is a portfolio I love, and on which I'm planning to uh, continue the work that we've done together to date. Now, in terms of that work, let's start with the doctors, the long-term national health plan, and then the focus on primary care. In terms of our doctors, we know 
uh, that uh, what we have seen is that uh, Australia has the finest clinical outcomes in the world. The Commonwealth uh, Fund out of New York ranked us as having the number two health system and the number one for clinical outcomes. That's you and your peers and everybody who has worked in the Australian health system to create that outcome. We're number two because we need to improve equity and access. Uh, in particular, that's uh, rural, regional and Indigenous Australia. So that has to be a shared passion going forwards. But as part of that, we were very fortunate to work uh, constructively with both Tony and his predecessor, Michael Gannon, in bringing together the compact between the AMA and the government. That allowed for the re-indexation of, uh, of Medicare and uh, in particular, it put us on a very, very strong partnership footing for design of programs going forward. Out of that came the $550 million Stronger Rural Health Plan, and that's about having 3,000 new doctors and 3,000 new nurses in rural and regional Australia over the coming decade. A shared program. Uh, that then leads into the broader long-term national health plan, the four pillars of which we will continue through the course of this government. First and foremost is primary care, and that's a combination of uh, Medicare and the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, or access to doctors and nurses and access to medicines. And in terms of Medicare, we know that we have the legislated guarantee, so the first call on budget funds under law is Medicare. And what we see is that growth, uh, which is more than just population, it's growth which is driven uh, by investment in new and additional services over and above everything else in Medicare, uh, will go from $19 billion under the previous government uh, to 26, 27, 29 and $31 billion over the four years of the uh, recently announced budget, which we took to the election, which has now been reaffirmed. Linked to that, uh, is uh, the fact that we will also uh, be able to continue to support new medicines. 2,000 new medicines to date, life-saving, life-changing. It empowers you to be better doctors, more effective doctors, uh, to help change lives, save lives and protect lives, whether it's or can be for cystic fibrosis, spin rasa for spinal muscular atrophy, uh, whether it's uh, medicines such as Keytruda uh, or medicines such as Tegriso, so many life-saving, life-changing medicines, particularly as we evolve the nature of medical treatment over the course of the coming decade to greater immunotherapy, greater precision, increased genomics and in increased stem cells. That's an exciting pathway and plan. The second of our pillars is, of course, the hospitals. Now, in terms of the hospitals, uh, we're investing an extra $31 billion uh, in the next hospitals agreement. And what we've done is we've gone from $13 billion of hospital funding before we came uh, to government on an annual basis uh, to what will be over the next four years, 23, 24, 25 and $26 billion. So an immensely important investment. But linked to that is the reforms to support private hospitals and private health insurance. So Australia has a blended system. We've just had the lowest change in private health insurance in 18 years. But I want to continue to push on this front, to go further, to achieve more, uh, and to ensure that we're strengthening private health as we proceed. Um, and that will mean that we can keep Australia's blended system so as we take the pre the wonders of modern technology. Um, we're still we're trying to rectify that uh, glitch and try and bring that back to the screen because he did have two important announcements to make. Well, welcome everybody to the AMA National Conference. Uh, I apologize. It did work before, I can assure you, when we worked with it in the, uh, in the, uh, during the lunch break. So 
just please all bear with us for one moment. Um, as I said, uh, the, va the issues around an election in the same week as national conference, you'd think that the temerity of even f scheduling an election this, uh, this past week, how dare they? Um, Sorry? <laughs> no. Okay. It seems like There were two important announcements on the, that video. Uh, one was a, a, an announcement a uh, to work with us on preventative health in particular, uh, in response to a lot of the media, uh, the media advocacy that we put in play, especially in the last week in the lead up to the election. And the other one was around the commitment to a 10 year plan to primary health care. So they are significant announcements um, and we'll try and run that video um, at some time again before the end of the next, of this, either today or tomorrow. Um, but uh, apologies for that, we tried. Okay, thank you. So we'll now uh, uh, resume the program and we go to national conference proceedings. And uh, there is an outline of these matters in page, from page 19 of the, of the NatCon handbook. <coughs> 